sparkling eye tomato soup, and savory pumpkin pie for Halloween. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And in this episode, we use some of our new knives to cook up some unusual dishes in honor of the season. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. The Halloween candle has been lit, and once more we will investigate unusual dishes of the season. And this year we will feature sparkling eye tomato soup, made from eyeballs taken from wild hogs here in Georgia. Now it is somewhat unusual in the American culture to eat eyeballs. Yeah. But. Uh, such things are not unusual in other parts of the world, such as in Asia and in the Middle East. So therefore, yeah, these add a little spice, as you will see, to an otherwise bland dish, and do make an unusual statement. Typically in American cooking, the flavors are blended to the point that they are hardly indistinguishable one from another. Not so with cooking in many other parts of the world. Here, for example, we're going to be using crushed black pepper. So when you bite on one of those peppercorns, yeah! And also, when you crunch down on one of those flavorful eyeballs, yeah! You get an altogether different sensation in the mouth and taste. And so we're going to use our pumpkin right here. And we will also employ it. And incidentally, uh, this, this is a large pumpkin. Uh, I'll also be making some enhanced pumpkin pies, a savory version, uh, which will feature uh, deer meat, cheese, and onions, among other things. So we'll get around to doing that. Basic pumpkin busting is usually the providence of kids in the household, but I don't happen to have any present at the moment. So we're going to do it, and we're going to use our favorite fox axe here. Uh, this is available from R.G. Russell. It's imported from Italy, and the best tool of its type. For cooking axe. And so we proceed. I'm breaking it into sections that I can easily work with some of my larger knives. And I will be doing a cleaver too, by the way. But I don't, just don't have that one ready yet. Oh, it will be next year. My medium utility knife here easily allows the seed to be scraped from the hole. And this flat point is particularly useful because you see I can scrape with it without actually digging into the flesh. No other commercial knife allows you to do this. Additional cutting up of the pumpkin into pieces more amenable for putting in the average size pot uh, will be done with my large knife here. Uh, this is the cabbage and duck chopper. And it is used for large work like this, and basically it's just pressed down like that, and that very efficiently chops large vegetables like cabbage and this, as you see, without slamming down on a cutting surface. Cut off this piece of stem here. 
Okay. And there's a little bit here we'll recover. Okay. So this is how you get the pieces down so you can actually get them in a smaller pot. Once like this, you can use a smaller utility knife and just trim off this interior rind very easily, like yay. Now the pumpkins are being distributed with in three large pots on the stove and what you want to do is to allow enough room that water can circulate between the pumpkin fragments so they will have a chance to boil and cook evenly. Our first pot of pumpkin has now cooked tender so we're going to pour out in our tri-corner colander there and allow it to cool. We'll have to let that cool enough so that we can handle it with the fingers and actually remove the peeling. While the other components are cooking and cooling, we're going to cut a little cheese. Now we have the cheese cut in about two millimeter or quarter inch cubes and the rest of the pumpkin is ready to take up. Our medium utility knife chops walnuts very well and we are also going to have walnuts in our enhanced pumpkin pie. Now that we have our pumpkins nicely chilled, we can go ahead and take the rind off. And this is very, very easy now uh, and much easier than before. There we go. Here I am on Ospa Island with two of the hogs that contributed their eyeballs to my sparkling eye tomato soup. Now in the soup went a large can of tomato soup concentrate, plus about a pound of browned deer meat, plus some browned onions which were browned in oil that had some cloves in them to give a little taste to the soup itself. We're now going to mix our filling for our savory pumpkin pie. And in it, I'm going to start with a little olive oil. Now these are cloves, so it gives a little flavor of cloves to the oil. Just enough to line the bottom of this pan here. And we're going to use the scented oil to caramelize and sweeten these onions. We've now tasted the mix. Now one thing it needs, this needs some salt. So we're going to add salt. 
Surprisingly enough, even ordinary pumpkin pie that one would want sweet needs salt. We're also going to add a little nutmeg and a little cinnamon powder and a little sweet and low here and vanilla extract. You gotta work this pretty fast because those whites are starting to starting to work up to setting. And I need to get them in the pie shells in a hurry. Yeah. That's got it guys. Now to the pie shells. The amount of mix made up filled exactly four shells, which is what I had. And I still have enough pumpkin left over for another good pie. Just a plain pumpkin pie. So the nice thing about pumpkin like this is you can freeze it if you don't happen to use it all. If you get a huge pumpkin, and like I did, uh, you don't buy enough shells to finish it all. Well, it can freeze at this stage and do perfectly well. So we'll put this in plastic bags and put it in the freezer and use it in a bit. The moment has arrived. We are now ready to see if our creations lived up to our expectations. Well, so far as Hobie's Knives of China. This did very well indeed for chopping up those very large sections of pumpkin. Worked exactly as designed. Our medium utility knife, likewise, performed well. But for trimming on the pumpkin, as well as dicing up into smaller pieces and removing the rind, all performed flawlessly. Now, concerning the food. We have a cracker. We have our tomato soup. I do smell a little smell of clove, as I suspected, because of the added salt and the concentrated tomato soup. Yeah, the soup is adequately salty, but it's not over salty. Definitely taste of tomato. What else? Okay. We have an eyeball. It survived the cooking fine. A little piece here on the end. Of the browned deer meat which was added and of course a few smaller pieces of onion crunched and ate well you did get a little bit of flavor burst when I crunched on the eyeball you can taste the onions and the onions add a little bit of crunch and flavor Another eyeball coming up. Did good. I don't notice any immediate improvement in vision though. Not that anyone was expecting. Okay. About our other dish here. This is basically a one dish meal. You have eggs, fruit, meat, vegetables, pastry, and I use this as a one pot meal of sorts when I go hunting. So this will be frozen and taken out with me on my hunt. It makes an outstanding breakfast, for example. Mm. Yeah, I forgot about the nuts. Yeah. It is not particularly sweet even though it has coconut in it and raisins and a little added sweetener, which is fine. But it's sweet enough. It's uh, sweetened like a very mild custard. Now this is a very fine dish. Now if you really wanted to go after it, 
You can even put a little cayenne pepper on it. Yeah. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Here are a few of my knife patterns from Hovey's Knives of China. Uh, we have more than 15 patterns at present. Now, I am also the author of a series of outdoor books, and these include practical bow fishing, backyard deer hunting, extreme muzzleloading, and crossbow hunting, as well as a series of e-books on muzzleloading. Now, this video is unusual in topic, but it does illustrate the utility of my knives. For more information on those, you can go to the website below. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 500 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.